Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, and uh, thank you to, for the, um, the the work of the great work of the right honourable member for West Dorset, who's making today's proceedings possible. I rise today to speak in support of Amendment D, in my name and the name of the honourable member for Grantham and other honourable members. Mr. Speaker, this really is five minutes to midnight for this Parliament, for this Government and for our country. We desperately need to find a way out of this mess. Our country has spent two years tied up in knots by the Prime Minister's incompatible red lines, which offered such a narrow interpretation of the referendum result. A 52-48 vote was certainly not an instruction for a disastrous no deal or a hard Canada-style job-destroying Brexit. It was an instruction to move house, but to stay in the same neighbourhood. The EFTA EEA model offers just that possibility. It respects the referendum result without wrecking the British economy. Not convinced? Well, it's worth remembering what Nigel Farage told a Question Time audience in 2016. I hear people say, he said, wouldn't it be terrible if we were like Norway or Switzerland? Really? They are rich, they're happy, and they're self-governing countries. Or the member for North Shropshire, a passionate Brexiteer, in 2015 told us only a madman would leave the market. Or the member for Uxbridge and South Ryslip, who has also been supportive of the single market in the past. The point I am making here is that in 2016 Euroscepticism meant something that it apparently no longer means today. Today Euroscepticism means to setting off I'm sorry, the Speaker said we've got very little time, so I'm afraid I won't be able to take any. Today, Euroscepticism seems to mean setting off into the Brexit fantasy forest of unicorns <laughs> and rainbows. Yet in 2016, Euroscepticism meant simply being opposed to political integration whilst cheerleading for the single market. And that, in a nutshell, is what Common Market 2.0 is all about. What does it require? Well, first, it only requires a renegotiation of the short political declaration on the future relationship, which the EU has consistently told us it is open to amending. The reason that Labour politicians such as myself have rejected the Prime Minister's deal is because that political declaration, because of that political declaration, not because of the withdrawal agreement. That is because the political declaration offers no long-term guarantee on workers' rights and does nothing for the services sector, which is 80% of our economy. It is membership of the single market that delivers for workers' rights and for the services sector. That point was made explicitly by Francis O'Grady of the Trade Union Congress just this morning and by the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders this morning also, who were absolutely clear they didn't mince their words. A customs union alone will not deliver on workers' rights or on frictionless trade at our borders. Trade unions and business voices came together to make it abundantly clear that we need single market membership. Under Common Market 2.0, we would maintain full participation in the single market through our membership of the European Economic Area by joining the EEA's only non-EU <coughs> pillar, the European Free Trade Association. We would add to this a comprehensive customs arrangement with the EU at least until alternative arrangements to secure frictionless trade on the Irish border can be agreed via other means, for instance, new technology. The EU has indicated that this bespoke combination is available for the UK given the need to preserve the Good Friday Agreement. A major strength of Common Market 2.0 is that it is by far the fastest viable route to Brexit. We could be in the EFTA pillar by the summer and in a customs arrangement well before December 2020, removing almost all the risks of the unpopular backstop ever coming into play, unpopular with some members across the other side of this House particularly. Mr Speaker, there are very clear benefits to Common Market 2.0, not least that it delivers on what the majority of the British public actually want from Brexit. On the doorstep in my Aberavon constituency and the, the doorsteps of my other colleagues, I hear the same message time and again from our voters, particularly older voters. We voted for a common market. We didn't vote for all the political stuff. Common Market 2.0 continues our close economic relationship 
but we would leave the EU's political institutions, leave the jurisdiction of the ECJ, leave the common agricultural and fisheries policy, and leave the EU's drive towards ever closer political union. We would see a marked improvement in our position on the freedom of movement through the safeguard measures written into Article 112 of the EEA agreement. These safeguards would give the UK a qualified but unilateral treaty-based right to suspend... The, the, um, Mr Speaker has said, I'm sorry, that we haven't got time for your interventions. Would give a u qualified but unilateral treaty-based right to suspend freedom of movement.